All right, so now let's start putting out our Apollo client. We have already installed the dependencies, so let's get started. So let's just take a look at the documentation for Apollo client for a minute. And if we can see how, how we usually uh, initiate uh, our Apollo client. So we import Apollo client and then we uh, import Apollo provider, maybe GQL use query and in memory cache uh, then we initialize our client as a new apollo client because this apollo client is a class so we initialize with uh, some uri and then we provide the cache options and then we provide this client to this apollo provider where will we initialize client is equal to client but uh, we are, because we are using nextjs and Next.js uh, runs, uh, compiles a front end on the server side, so we need to uh, do a few adjustments, few uh, adjustments to the way we initialize our Apollo client. So let's just see how we can do that. So I will close this, and in the client folder, let's just create a new folder. I will call it Apollo, and in this Apollo folder. We will actually have a couple of different files, but for now, uh, let's just create client.ts. Okay, so we will need to, because we are uh, making our customized client, so we uh, I created a separate file for this. Then we will import this client file in our pages app.tsx and we will see all that uh, once we get over with this client.ts file. So I will import something from Apollo client and this will be Apollo client and in memory cache and normalized cache. Then uh, let's just import HTTP link from Apollo client. Let's see. Uh, let's just import it at the top because we have already imported Apollo client. I will cut this and HTTP link then we need on error actually we uh, we can import this separately import something from apollo client link and error this will be on error uh, Let's just do let do let Apollo client and make sure to provide uh, this declaration, its type declaration over here, Apollo client, and then pass in the normalized cache option. Uh, Make sure to do this because if if we don't do this, then we don't get the auto completion uh, that we will be using later on. So, for example, we won't be able to get options such as client dot query and all that. Uh, we will be needing that. So, just make sure to do this for now, and we will take care of the rest later on. And I'll show you uh, what problem occurs if we don't provide this these types. So, just bear for me this. Uh, bear with me for for this part and later on we, we can we can test this out then let's just do const api url now this is the api url that we have set us uh, we have already set up so actually let's, it, it, it would be better if we create an environment variable file so inside our client i will close these files and I will create two files and I will name one as dot env dot develop 
meant and I will also create another file I will call it .env.production so we are basically separating our environment variables based on environment then let's just initialize we can just uh, I will close this notifications and we will do next public API and I will call this HTTP colon slash slash local host and we have um, hosted our development API on local uh, development API on local host 4000 so this should be local host 4000 and let's just also uh, add our environment variable for our client API so public client uh, client URL client URL and our client is hosted on HTTP colon clone source local host 3000 I will copy this actually uh, this should be in development yeah because we, uh, these are the environment variables for development and in production you will write whatever environment variables you you get after hosting these sites so so for for our environment variable in next public api you can just write http or i will just write your production api url and it should be capital r and this should be your production client URL alright so we have our environment variable set up and one one all uh, the final note that I would like to say is that make sure that you have this next public uh, prefix setup or the next will not be able to identify these environment variables uh, on the browser so we need to set these next public uh, prefixes otherwise if we don't set these prefixes and for example I just write API then the problem would be that uh, we will we would only be able to access these um, environment variables on the server side but we, we, we also need to access these on the browser side and I can actually show you the documentation for this in just in case you're wondering so we can do next JS environment variables so like this and you can read about these on this so over here somewhere it should be done yep over here so we have to write next public and uh, exposing environment variables to the browser so make sure to do this and that's what we are doing you can read about this more on this next.js and uh, basic features slash environment variables all right so let's just go to the Apollo slash client and now we can import these variables easily so we can just do process dot env dot and I will just do next public underscore API I will just check it once more so it's next public API then uh, let's just get uh, we will initialize our Apollo client so let's just do let's just create a function export function initialize initialize Apollo and this will take an initial state which is usually we set it to null <coughs> and we need to check if in case there is an initial state 
then we can set Uh, we have to uh, initialize our Apollo client variable. So let's go above this and initialize this to const underscore Apollo client, which is equal to Apollo client. And if Apollo client is present or if there is not, we will just create Apollo client and I haven't defined this function yet but I will define it in a minute so let's just leave this for now and in case if there is uh, there is initial state present we can do underscore Apollo client dot cache dot restore and pass in the initial state and this is giving an error because of the uh, null problem. The null is not assignable to type normalized cache. So we will just provide uh, like this. Now, uh, below this, if the type of window is undefined, that means uh, the client has not loaded yet then we can just return Apollo client or actually um, yep I think that's fine so let's just do if there is no Apollo client then we can set Apollo client equal to underscore Apollo client and then return Apollo client sorry underscore Apollo client now let's create our create Apollo client function so I will create a function const create Apollo client this should be small l this should also be small l and we will return new apollo client and we will pass in a few options so we will pass in ssr mode and this should be dependent if our window is defined or not so if type of window it, this will take a boolean so we can just do type of window is equal to undefined so if it will be undefined then this will be true that means our client has not loaded yet so use ssr mode will be set to true otherwise it will be set to false then we need link and we would do error link dot concat and this should be actually simply error link and we will define this error link in a minute so for now let's just do a concat and we will pass in create isomorphic link and we will also create this in a minute isomorphic link and then cache will be uh, similar to what we are usually we usually do when we are using Apollo client with normal react applications which will be new in memory cache uh, then let's create our error link so const error link this should be on error and if uh, this will be of this will take a function an anonymous function and Uh, we are creating this error link we, we could just simply do a thing like this uh, create isomorphic link and uh, create a function like this const, const create isomorphic link 
but we are doing this because we need to handle uh, two different types of error one will be graphql errors and other will be network errors so let's just do graphql errors and network errors and in case of graphql errors we will just console.log these errors which we get from the server side or from our api but if there will be network errors and if type of window is not equal to undefined and and window and uh, we are offline that means uh, the internet connection is gone but the client is loaded so we can write window dot navigator dot online so this line uh, uh, we are only checking that if the window is undefined and a window is not undefined and we are online we are offline so we will uh, this if uh, if line will be executed and we will just do alert and we will write please check your internet connection or retry again so we have handled one type of error uh, which will be the network error and this is uh, this will be handled globally so we don't have to uh, handle these types of errors in each of our pages and components specifically so we have handled it using error link so this is the use case of error link we are handling these network errors globally and let's do else if and if type of window is not undefined <coughs> Actually, let's just keep this also as undefined. And network, and there is a network error message. Uh, network error dot message, which is of type. Now I'll paste this, paste this message so uh, you can also paste this from the repository. And this message is of this form which says response not successful or received status code 400 so in this case uh, we will also alert the user by giving them a message of server received a bad request uh, please check your client queries so in this case this means that something went wrong with our client uh, queries or mutations or subscriptions with whatever and uh, we, the server response uh, response uh, gave us code 400 which means a bad request so there is some problem with the client only and finally if both of these checks are passed we will just do console.log network error and this will be we will just give out the network error and we can now error we can merge that error link dot concat and we will pass in the create isomorphic link now let's create our create isomorphic link which is a function and this returns new http link 
which takes an argument of URI that will be dollar sign API URL which we define right here so dollar sign API URL and slash GraphQL then we need the credentials and we can pass in include all right so in this new http link we are uh, basically telling graphql to from where to request the data and uh, we're telling the graphql to request the data from local host uh, local host from the local host 4000 which is right here and then we are providing slash graphql so that means this would be something like http local host 4000 slash graphql and now the uh, graphql knows from where to retrieve our api data so we have created a http link and do note we are also providing credentials include and if you remember we also did a similar thing when we were working with our api and if i go back to our api inside index.ts we did request.credentials.include that means we need to serve our cookies from client to our api and so we need to put this request we, we, we put this fun, uh, line in our playground so we were able to fed, uh, serve cookies from our graphql playground to the api and now we are putting this credentials include functions over here so we will be able to serve our cookies from our next.js client to our api and finally let's just uh, export let's just create a, a a hook so that we can use this use apollo anywhere we want so we can do export let's just do export function use apollo and this will be initial this will take initial state which will be any and let's do const store which will be use memo so we need the use memo hook and we will pass in the function of initialize apollo with initial state and let's just pass as a dependency argument initial state and then return the store Uh, this is giving us an error because we then to initial state and this shouldn't be here all right so we have created our use apollo hook that we can use anywhere and we have we will have the access to our store now i will close this i will close this and let's just go back to our i will close the api folder inside the pages and in this app.tsx now we'll import the apollo provider from apollo client because we need to wrap our components with apollo uh, provider so that we could like, access the client apollo provider and let's just wrap this right here apollo provider pass the layout and we can we have to uh, provide the client 
argument so let's also import the use apollo use apollo and we will use this hook to get the client the const client is equal to use apollo and this will take page props dot initial apollo state and we can pass this initial apollo state from any of the page components that we want so we uh, we will just pass this if it will be null then we have uh, handled that case where uh, right here we are taking the value as null so if this uh, this will be null and we will just do this if check where the type of windows are undefined and return the Apollo client and if there is no Apollo client then we will assign this Apollo client to this one and then return this then let's just provide this client to this argument and if this all seems a, a little bit complex so what I would recommend is actually trying this out once on your own and I'm pretty sure you will you will get a good grasp of these concepts all right so our client is set and let's just restart our terminal and see if we get any errors or something like that so let's just do yarn dev let's go to localhost 3000 I think it's taking a little bit of new time because we added new files and all so I think we're we're good we, are, we don't have any errors and we can still access our pages and all that yep I think we're good to go so now <coughs> let's just add a mutations and queries that we will be using and in the next part uh, we will create our higher order component that will wrap our all the component all of our private routes and protected routes so we will create a higher order component that each time we will load these components it will check whether the user is logged in or not and if the user is logged in then it will show the private pages and if the user is not logged in then uh, it will redirect the user to the login page uh, so we will do that in the next part for now let's just add our mutations and queries so in the Apollo I will create a new file and I will call it mutation dot mutations dot ts actually so I will import something from Apollo client and I will import GQL then let's just do export const login mutation and this will be gql and this will be mutation login and this will be dollar sign otp and this will be string because we are taking an otp as a string and then this is uh, this is compulsory so we need uh, we need to put this and let's just put in a uh, login and we will take in the otp we will provide the otp variable and what do we uh, what do we return we return a user and in the user we will have the underscore id we will have the username we will have phone we will have login strategy
all right so this looks good uh, let's just do export const get OTP mutation and this will also be a GQL and we will do a mutation get OTP we will pass in dollar sign email or phone and this this should be string uh, then we will do get OTP and this will be email or phone and we will assign our argument email or phone uh, we will provide these values email or phone from wherever we will uh, call our uh, call these mutations so in the use mutation hook and all that then we need the logout mutation Spot const log out mutation then this should be GQL should be mutation and let's just do logout let's just uh, I think this is enough for now this, these mutations we might have one more mutation to update the profile uh, we will add that later on so for now these mutations are enough now let's add our queries I will create a new file and I will name it queries.ts so inside the queries we will do import gql again from apollo client and we need gql then we need export const current user to query what the who uh, I mean what current user is currently logged in so we will need this query and this will be gql and this will be query current user and this should be underscore id username email phone and login strategy and let's do export const list frameworks query and we need this query to list our frameworks so we need to list our frameworks the frameworks that I'm talking about are these I will go to our resolvers and frameworks so we had these frameworks so we need to query these right here so we need to create query for this so this will be GQL this should be query and list frameworks and this should be underscore ID name URL and let's also put username in our mutations we have the username but we don't have the email so let's put email okay so I think our queries are complete and in the next part we will start creating our higher order component uh, which will which will make sure that the only logged in users can log in and view the projected pages otherwise uh, that a higher order component will uh, redirect the user to login page all right see you in the next part